In today's derelict tools your neighbor was throwing away, we have a nice Craftsman Jack, a three ton, but it has some issues. One is that, I mean, it will pump up, but that's painfully slow. And two is the shin knocker. Yeah, that won't, that gets annoying. That's an easy one. That's a spring in there, but he says, this is going to the scrap metal guy. And I said, not today. Let me fix it for you. So let's throw it off on the workbench and see what we got. So I actually bought this exact same model. It had to be 2002 or somewhere around there from Sears. I think I paid a 90 bucks or a hundred bucks, but it came with this three ton jack, two jack stands, I think a stool that you sat on and a uh, fender cover. Those magnetic fender covers that I never use, but I still got it and I still use the jack stands. Anyway. You can buy a complete rebuild kit for the piston and everything in there. Um, and I have a whole video on doing that and rebuilding these, but I don't think this one needs it. One, because it pumps steel, and I don't see just a puddle of oil underneath. It does have residual oil kind of all the way around, which leads me to think that it's just kind of weeping, which, you know, a 20, 20 to 25 year old jack, that's to be expected. So I think we're just gonna check the fluid. But I noticed, we have a ton of play in here and it doesn't seem to be jacking some of the jack motion so the jack pushes this down is lost just to wobble so I'm losing I mean it only looks like I mean it's moving two inches here which is about a foot and a half at the top of the handle where your normal stroke would be so we're gonna fix that but I think first we're gonna do is just fill it up with jack oil and see if that remedies the problem of it just raising up and down. So all we have to do is fill up the little plug right here. A lot of people don't realize um, that all that's in these jacks is a bottle jack laying on its side. So the same little rubber plug. And all it is is the entire outside around the piston and stuff is just a reservoir. So we just got to fill that up. It go, you fill it up with the jack retracted. Not when it's full because then you'd have too much fluid in there. But anyway, you do it with the jack retracted. Um, this one, this is actually a little stubby bottle jack. Actually awesome, I just barely bought this. I think it was under 30 bucks and well worth it. I've never had a stubby one and a stubby one fits everywhere because it fits where a jack like this would. Um, where I've had so many tall ones over the years that I never use because they don't fit under anything. But I'll put a link to that. But we'll come in here, you see the little plug right here? All we do is pop it out. There we go, pop it out. So if you look in there, you can see um, not even far down is a, another piece of metal. That's actually the uh, cylinder for the main piston. So this is just old hydraulic oil, which is just jack oil. This is not motor oil. Motor oil is way too thick for a jack. You could put it in there, but you're gonna hate life. Am I already full? I'm making a mess? Probably. They don't hold a ton. It's not that low. Okay, to bleed a jack. What you're going to do is once it's full of oil and the handle is twisted to release. So it's gonna drop the jack down. You just pump it. See, release it, release it all the way. And we just slowly pump it, maybe a dozen times, and that will pump all the air out of the piston. You want it all the way retracted. Usually now I like to jack up the jack before I put the plug back in. Um, and I'll show you why. We'll put the plug back in now. You can put the plug back in, but then you have to burp it. I'll show you. It's already working better. But look, you notice that I go really fast. It doesn't jack very far, but now if I wait a second. I get more than if I go fast. That's because I created a vacuum in here. 
So now if I jack it all the way up, I'm gonna burp it. It's not all the way up, but it's not moving good. I'm gonna burp this. There. Now, it'll move at full speed again. So you wanna jack it all the way up, all the way to the top, and we burp our plug. There. Now that's not holding a vacuum, so the oil, it holds a vacuum in there so the oil can't flow down to the bigger piston. That's it. So you can put the plug in now, but you could pinch your fingers if you weren't careful. So you can put it at the bottom and just bring your thing in there and just, just burp it. Now it should cycle like it, like it should. Okay, that's working good. I am losing a lot of my stroke. I'm gonna take out this bolt and we're gonna see how worn this is. See, most people don't get to see under the jack. It's just simply a bottle jack laying on its side with a different base plate on it. Instead of having the piston at the same angle that you, know, that you pump up, it's just hanging out at the back and goes the other direction. And there's our broken spring. I actually have one of these because I have the same jack and I bought two of them. So um, I had a spare for myself, but now it goes to the neighbor. Take out this bolt. We got this one. Oh wow, you can see the wear on that. And this should just slide out. Yep, there's a little bit of a groove on this pin that just keeps it in there. There's just a little flat spot worn or machined into it. Let's see how, oh yeah, look at that. Uh, I would call that worn out. The other side's pretty good. I mean, the other side's a little sloppy, but nowhere near what that side is. So we need to fill that in. Um, if it's cast steel, we just weld it. If it's cast iron, you could also try to weld it, usually with flux core or nickel rod or something else. But then you run the risk of cracking it and it would crack right on this little thin joint where I don't want it to crack because we just have to fill in the bottom of this hole. So usually the best thing you do is braise it. And so I think we're just going to braise that hole in um, you could also, I mean, we're just filling in a gap. The bolt just rides down at the bottom. Um, you could take a piece of copper pipe and just cut half of it, a half moon shape, just for a wear surface. Or even if you wanted a piece of brass, if you were really getting uh, technical. And then you could just fill it in with solder, that gap, just so it just didn't have anywhere to go. It's not like a high moving part or anything. I thought this was cast iron, but now I'm thinking it's cast steel. And there's a couple ways you can tell. One is the ringing hammer effect, but it really depends on the thing. Um, cast steel and steel have a ring to them. Cast iron is just a dull thud. Or it depends on how you hold it. I mean, there's a little bit of a ring, but... If you hold it really light, but I got other parts on here. Kind of get a ring. I mean, but this is steel. You know, so people, it's not the easiest thing to do. Where if you hold this sheet, you know, if I hold this down here, but I hold it up here, it rings. So then we go to the spark test. So this has a little bit of a ring to it. A little bit. And the spark test is if it's, uh, generally if it has like yellow sparks that fly out and break at the end. Um, so here's just a piece of steel. I don't know if the video will show that. Supposedly cast iron has, I don't have a chunk of cast iron that I saw right off hand, has more reddish sparks. It, it depends on how much like carbon or uh, carbon's in it. I don't know, that almost kind of looks like orangish sparks. These are definitely yellower sparks, so maybe this is cast iron. It's impossible to tell. I've never been able to definitively tell, and I don't think anybody really can. People say they can, but we have to use oxyacetylene for this, and you can see I keep my tanks pretty buried, and for years, it was just a nightmare to get them out, but 
I actually put it on a retractable cord rail so the, they just come up and connect there. And so now I can just pull them out my oxy-acetylene and I use it way more. I think that's a 50 foot hose. Well worth it. I found this, I think Daryl like, had like broken fittings or something. Some guy had snapped them off, had it on a service truck. I think I paid 50 bucks for this thing. Um, so find yourself one of these if you want to do oxyacetylene and you hate dragging that tank everywhere. So. so a lot of you guys know, but for the people that don't know, so this is a cutting tip. This is good for, I use this all the time, just for heating or cutting. This is generally what you would use on oxyacetylene or oxypropane. But if you ever want to weld, you can't actually use oxypropane, which is cheaper. So you have to use oxyacetylene. And so you have to use your welding tips, which are these two right here. This is a rosebud, that's just for heating. And they come in different lengths and amount of gas they spit out. And so you kind of just have to, there is charts and stuff you can play around with. So we just put in a, uh, like a welding tip. The same thing, you would weld steel with this. It actually welds really well. Um, so we're just gonna play around with this. I am not a professional. I have not actually even brazed probably in five years, but it's pretty easy. Cause you just heat it. It's very natural. Cause you just heat it up, melt it in and, and go from there. So it's not like, I don't know. I always found it super easy to learn how to weld in a, with oxyacetylene cut, stuff like that. Um, we're just using a bronze rod coated. It looks like this. You can also get it uncoated. So there's no coating on it and you'd use old school stuff. You would actually heat up and then you dip it in this flux and kind of go from there. Um, I actually don't even know if you can, you can somewhere. I think I've seen it, but it's been a while since I've even bought this rod. It looks like last time I bought rod was from Home Depot in 2007 for, I oh know, 2017. So seven, eight years ago for $7 and 47 cents. And it doesn't take much, it lasts forever. So we're just gonna fill this in right here. We just heat it up and we just kind of dab this on and melt it in. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's funny because my acetylene tank has been empty almost for years and it just keeps going. Looks like we're at four PSI. It doesn't take much, but to make sure we have enough to melt this um, with the acetylene, I'm gonna preheat it just with some um, propane. Propane's cheap. <laughs> And then I don't have to use as much heat, even though that'll heat it up way faster. It's a really thin area, but this might save me a little bit of settling. I might get through the job. I gotta go change out the tank though. Essentially get it almost red hot. We just dab in some filler. But if it doesn't go on, you just flow it out. Oh, the smell. I forgot it had a smell. It's been, been a while. Kind of has a acidic smell, sweet smell to it. I know you guys can't see. Maybe you can. Keep building it up. 3 PSA. We're down to like 2.5-3 PSA. I think we have enough in there to grind out. While that cools down, we can tackle the bolt. And this is just we're just gonna weld onto the top right there. Then we'll throw it in the lathe. We could just grind it down to make it round again. And it's always weird when you're just adding filler material, like what heat setting to do. Usually you wanna go a little bit hotter. So it bonds, cause you're just doing short little um, like spot welds. You're just, so. That's good to go now. And now I'm just gonna grind this. I could you put this in the mill or something or something to that effect, get more precise. But there's just no good way to clamp or grab this. So we're just gonna use the uh, like a carbide burr. 
So this hole was never precise to begin with. I mean, that's the, this hole isn't worn out at all on the other side. And we have dang near an eighth of an inch. Not quite, but dang near. So you can see it almost looks like I have it oval because I have it actually just barely fitting. I can't really push it through this side because there's that thing in the way. But it just barely fits in there that way. And there's a little bit of side to side this way. But that was where the factory um, hole was drilled. But it wears pretty much only in that direction as we know. So, I mean, that's tighter than factory. We should be able to put this back together and it'll be nice and tight. That's what she said. So the question is, if it was leaking oil, like where did the oil come from? A lot of times it can be around this, the base of this outer tube threads into, um, threads into the base. That can leak. Um, it can leak around the main piston seal, but usually you will see it up there at the top, you know, which is the same as right around here. So down here or up here, you can usually tell that pretty easily as there's a puddle. There's a puddle about right here on the jack. It looks like it doesn't leave a puddle, but I did just notice that this, um, this lets you get into the, uh, the valving for this. And that was, it was almost a quarter of a turn loose. So, and there's a little seal under there, probably a copper crush washer. So I just tighten that up and some oil kind of came around. So I think that's probably where the oil is coming from. Um, if it's leaking around this piston right here, you'll be able to tell. I don't see anything around there that would think that it is. Okay, old spring, new spring. I think it was like a dollar more when I bought this to buy a, a two pack. So win-win on that. Now the problem is I have to try to jam this in. There's two different, I think, um, for these Craftsman jacks, maybe for other jacks too, there's two different layouts where the spring can come out this side or that side. Um, I'll try to wedge this in here. And now this bolt wants to go in cricket, so we should be able to, there we go. That's in and ready to go. That's it. We got it all bled. There shouldn't be much movement. No, this starts moving almost instantly. Where before this wouldn't move until, I mean, I could get it almost to here, but it's already moved down a, a half inch. Uh, I don't have it locked in. You can see I'm not even doing a full stroke yeah it's working good okay this thing is ugly as sin though it was already kind of peeling off all the labeling and stuff but then it's been sitting in my backyard and getting rained on and sitting in the sun for about a month so i'm gonna clean that up and make a new decal for it maybe a vintage craftsman logo let's just clean it up so it actually looks like a nice jack so you care about it i guess and then we'll go give it back to the neighbor had a few hours to dry it's looking pretty dang shiny so I went and just designed a logo real fast I took the craftsman crown logo which is I think they used like 60s through mid 70s and I just put three ton in there kind of cut it out that's just vinyl doesn't need to be perfect and then we'll just stick the vinyl sticker there we'll see how low we can get it um, kind of center it there is a logo down here it's kind of in there, so I don't know. I designed these as well. Well, this is the original logo. I didn't really design these. And I thought maybe we'll just, maybe, put that on the side. Just make it look a little different.
take some of my sign painting paint and I just painted in all the uh, the stamping so then we'll take some mineral spirits and just try to wipe it I'll click clean that up but you get the idea it's not working very well the stamping's very shallow up at the top of these and so I'm having to play around with it so much that I'm removing paint. So the original black paint. So we're just going to spray paint over that real fast. And I think just attach those. Now we got to do something about these. Pop that out and grease that real fast. Nice. Greased? Not greased. Got a greaser right here. Let's throw some grease in it. Yeah, there we go. It's actually pretty greased. Want to see how I made that thing? It's all handmade, homemade. I'll put a link to that video. Homemade grease, drill power grease gun. One of my favorite things to lubricate, like I can't, there's no grease joint or anything on there, is uh, chainsaw bar oil. It's super, I don't know if you guys can see that, it's super sticky and tacky. So if you poured like regular oil there, it would just run off and drip off. This stuff will actually stay where you put it, like grease, almost. So if I just pour it in there, and it'll wick around and just soak around everywhere, I'll just put it on everything that moves. There's no handle on it. The handle's supposed to look like this. Here's mine, you can see, this is what the handle's supposed to look like. But, I actually bought a bunch of heat shrink with glue inside from China. Humongous size, look at this heat shrink. Just for this sort of thing. 40 millimeter, 52 millimeter. Has a four to one shrink ratio, so we'll just be able to take some of this heat shrink and just put it over and shrink it down. And then I just rolled the inside in. There we go. A handle. Oh yeah. Okay, this is my jack on the left. You can see they're the exact same model. So just listen to a Mine's still pretty smooth. I greased mine up probably five years ago. Yeah, okay, let's see how well they jack in comparison. I'm gonna tell you right now, the one on the right is going just a teeny bit more. So I took out all that slop and it feels a little bit smoother than my jack. Ugh, now I gotta clean up my jack. My jack is looking pretty sad in comparison. Yeah, it's going higher. I mean, it's about an inch higher, maybe an inch and a half. Yeah. There you are. Hey, help me move some firewood. Here, Ginger, bring that piece, go get it. Go get it, bring it, come on, get the stick. Get the stick, right there, get it. Come on, bring it, come on. Help me load it, get it. Don't let it go, come on. Take it over the fire, come on. Okay, drop it, come on. 
Good job. Let's get another one. Oh, now you think we're going for a ride? Let's go, come on. Come get the stick. Ginger, come on. Get it. Bring it, come on. Put it over there. Drop it. Good job. Hey, you give me my drink? Yeah, bring it here. Thank you. Good job.